thoughts of kind of getting on the floor, you know, seeing how you felt physically, getting up and down? Uh, what, what, what are your uh, thoughts on that? No, it feels good to be out there. Um, of course, I'd rather be up 30 than down 30, but, you know, as a pro, you got to stay ready. That's what I that's what all the guys did. Um, we get a lot of credit to our coaching staff to do the stay ready runs yesterday. Uh, we've been doing it in between days of games just for us, for us to stay ready because you never know with a long, deep playoff run, you know, knock on wood. So they just try to keep us fresh and just come out there and just just have respect for the game and go out there and play. Yeah, you know this Warriors team pretty well. You knew they were going to respond a certain way uh, in game two. Just, just kind of what were you anticipating that they did and, and what are some of the things that you guys got to adjust to a little quicker? I mean, I knew, I knew coming into this game that we're going to get a heavy dose of clay and stuff. At the end of the day, their approach for, you know, being down 0-1 with game two at their house, the last thing they want to do is go down 0-2 from the crib. So we knew they are going to play like how they played against Sacramento game seven. We'll leave it all out there. If it means they had to play 48 minutes, they'll do it. Um, you know, we weathered the first quarter storm. Uh, second quarter, the first six minutes, um, they, he pulled Steph out with two minutes left in the first and put him back in the big in the second to play with that second unit. And, you know, Clay and him kept, kept shooting, made shots in the second quarter and put us in position. And then the third quarter, we weren't able to um, weather that storm and kind of that was the game right there. Yeah, what's that challenge with them? It looked like they were giving stuff the ball earlier. Almost, he couldn't like Vando couldn't just keep them with ball denial, and you know then they were playing in the four on three. You know, getting how how much? Yeah, uh, we'll make adjustments. You know, that's 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 the uh, the nature of this uh, in the playoffs, right? Uh, we had a game plan game one. It worked for us. They made their adjustments going into game two, and now it's on us to uh, look back at the film, see whether or not the adjustments we need to make, or. If we didn't have the same effort as in game one, so we'll see. And uh, we'll get ready to play at home on Saturday. You've been through so many of these, and you know the not get too high, not get too low thing because you've been through it. But for some of the younger guys, uh, how can you impart that, that message to help them be prepared for the ebbs and flows of the series? Yeah, I know this series is going to be a it's gonna be a boxing match. You know, we won the first round. You know, they won the second. Um, you just got to stay with it. You know, this is a very unique team. You know, they shoot, think about it, game one, we try to limit their threes and they still got off 50 attempts. So that just shows you right there that they rather take threes than twos. Even if you chase them off the line, they're going to try to find a way to get three-point shots up, and that's what makes their team different than the rest of the league. Even though a lot of teams in the league try to copy them, nobody can copy the two best shooters that ever played a game. So um, got to make our adjustments. You know, this is part of the playoffs, a great learning experience. And um, now we go back home and uh, protect home court. What did you feel on the court were the biggest adjustments that Golden State made, and how did you think that impacted things? Um, I think they made, they made it small, you know. Uh, they changed the starter, and um, offensively they were, you know, open up the floor, and it was hard for us to guard, you know, um, um, four shooters, and Defensively, they were more aggressive. I feel like you know they they had all the loose balls and uh, the rebounds and everything. So yeah, that was a that was a game. Yeah, you were still able to find your rhythm, of shooting and offense at four threes in the first half. Where have you gotten to the point of of comfort with your game and kind of how you're fitting into your team? No, I was I, I was just being ready. You know, um, it was all good looks and then my teammates. You know. Made a good pass, and then, yeah, I was just ready to shoot, and it was like a practice show for me, yeah. Rui, uh, how did you see them adjust with AD? Uh, Darvin mentioned them kind of crowding the paint, and really any time he was trying to catch the ball, there's two, three guys around him. Uh, but, but just the way after you dropped 30 in game one, just kind of seeing how they adjusted. Yeah, they were for sure crapping the paint tonight, and, you know, I think... Uh, They they made a good adjustment for sure. Um, now it's our time to make adjustment. You know, um, next next game is going to be very important for us. You know, um, they might going to do the same thing. Maybe they they'll change it. We don't know, but we gotta we gotta figure it out tomorrow. We gotta we got we're gonna watch film. So yeah, we just gotta figure it out. Yeah. Rui, you guys have been so good defensively over the last. You know, month plus uh, hadn't given up a 40-point quarter the entire postseason until tonight. You gave up two. 
Where do you think the defensive breakdown was? Was it that a, a product of the amount of threes that they're taking? You think that that's where they were kind of breaking you guys down? Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, there was a four shooters, you know, on the court at the same time. You know, the first game, I think there was like, you know, maybe two or three shooters, you know, at the same time, and they, they made adjustment. And I then, you know, we just got to figure out, um, you know, the way, way to guard them, you know. Um, they open up the floor now, so, um, yeah, we just got to play together, you know, watch film and get back on the game three. To respond to game one, what did they do differently that you felt like what started to slip for you guys in the second quarter? Oh, they made a bunch of shots. The shot was like 50 from three or something, 50 for the game. Simple as that. You shoot the ball, make the ball, make shots at a high clip, you got a good chance to win it. Aside from adjustments and what you'll do to counter what they did, what did you learn in that first series, winning game one, losing game two, going home, kind of the importance of uh, staying locked in a certain way? Oh, it was a familiar position to be in. We got one in Memphis, uh, came back, took care of home court. Uh, I think they got one, and um, we had a chance from that point on. I think we had the advantage going into game six. So whatever we can do, just stay locked in and just stay the course. Obviously, you guys want to try to limit their threes, but they're they're not going to just you know, exceed uh, succeed to that. So what are the ways that you can still try to counter what they're doing from the three-point line? Just make it tougher. Make it tougher. Hope they miss. Is this an easier kind of look at the film, flush it, because you got that first game and you you, you, you got the split? Uh, sure. I mean, I think you learn something from every game. Uh, going from game to game, obviously, they're going to make adjustments and do little things that it's going to give them an advantage. So um, as far as washing down the drain, we're going to take something from this, get something from it, um, bring that with us to the next game. You know, for us, I think just our stagnation, I felt like, you know, I still have to go back and watch the game. And um, but my gut feeling, my instincts tell to me that my eyes saw us settle a little bit. We mishandled the ball some early. We were right there early on, neck and neck. But uh, a couple of possessions got away from us early, um, and I just thought we made a good job of crowding the paint. Tra- uh, excuse me, crowding the paint and uh, not allowing us, trying to prevent us from playing downhill as much, and that in turn affect you know what affects what we do at the free throw line. So. We'll go back to the drawing drawing board and look at uh, different ways we can sustain what we did well and what we've done well over these the, the course of these first two games, and then look at what we can possibly do better. Of course, new series now, but you lose game two in Memphis after winning game one. You get back home. Is there a different type of a sense of your team and how you think that you will respond and, and how, how different are these series and what these opponent challenges are? And no, I, I fully anticipate our team to respond in the right way. Darvin, uh, 80, 11 points tonight, 11 shots, uh, one free throw attempt. What, what did you make of Draymond's defense against him? And you referenced crowding the paint. They obviously, anytime he was rolling or trying to catch the ball, there was two, three guys around him at all times. You know, Dre, he's going to do his work early. And, you know, it's the reason why he's a perennial, perennial all-defensive player. Um, you know, he's going to force tough catches. And when he's on the ball, he, he, he's his own ball activity second to none um, and he's a good communicator when then when if a is not trying to go at him we're going into a secondary action after getting the ball to a he's great about that whether he has to switch or talk his his guy through um, through this scenario he, he's uh, he's 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 been you know top shelf his entire career in that in, in that regard so again we just we got to go back look at ways we can move a around put him in different uh, spacing different actions and just try to diversify his attack. Darvin, you guys went the entire postseason from the playing round first first round and uh, game one against Golden State without allowing 40 in a quarter and you do it second and third quarter today. Where, where do you think uh, your defense uh, wasn't up to snuff tonight? I mean, I just think just being ready from uh, from our the ball leaving our shooters hands sprinting back in transition, getting matched up, communicating. Um, you know, you make one slip, you miss one assignment, and they're going to make you pay. And um, as I mentioned before, they're probably most dangerous once they give the ball up. And that's when <laughs> that's, that's, that's when the race starts. I mean, um, those guys' ability to you know, run around on the floor and, and, and their bigs and their, their facilitators, guys, knowing where – you know, they can blindly throw a pass and that pass is going to be connecting to Clay or Steph or Jordan right in their spot. Um, 
and you know they they have a, a lot of pride, a ton of pride. They're a championship ball club for a reason. And uh, you know after game one, we fully anticipated them to come out and, and, and throw some haymakers, which they did. And you know Clay got off; he was seeing the ball go in early and often. So again, we got our work cut out for us. But you know you don't get this to this point in the season by it being easy. You have to buckle down, do your homework. Look at ways, you know, the W's and L's, the wisdom and losses, the lessons. Look at ways you uh, you can get better from it and, and, and try not to make the same mistakes twice. Beautiful. Let's hear from the Lakers now. LeBron James, Anthony Davis. LeBron, yeah, you said after game one, you, you were anticipating some, some differences in Golden State in game two. Uh, what did you find to be the, the most effective, whether Steph having the ball more or the way that they defended AD? What, what stood out to you? Um, they made the adjustments, and um, you know we knew they were going to do that. Um, that's what a championship team does, and uh, you know they they held serve on their home court tonight. And we got to um, obviously see the adjustments they made. We got to make our adjustments coming into Game Three. And AD, just same question for you. Uh, Draymond started on you last game. Obviously, it was Looney. Uh, they played a little different on the other end as well with the spread, uh, the spread offense. How, how did that impact you? Did you feel like? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I took all the same shots I took in Game One. Uh, you know, just missed them. Um, elbow jumpers, uh, pocket passes to, to the floater, same exact looks. Uh, didn't shoot no shot that I didn't shoot in game one. Uh, just missed them. Um, that's all. Uh, like Bron said, they made adjustments. Um, shot the ball extremely well from three. Um, so uh, we'll be better. Um, I'll be better. Uh, you know, making those shots. Get back home on our home floor, on our home floor, and uh, try to take care of business. Uh, this question is for either of you, but wh where did you feel like the game kind of slipped away tonight? W was it the third quarter when they, you know, made eight threes and, and dropped forty plus, or, or was it kind of right before halftime? Or, or what did you see with that? Yeah, I mean, going to half, um, you know, up eleven, you know, went on the run, and then obviously the third quarter, uh, we know they're a big third quarter team. Came out um, on fire, had forty three in the third. Um, and also 41 in the second. So uh, it's not like us um, on the defensive end to give up those um, type of quarters. Uh, so we got to be better uh, defensively. But um, I think, you know, going to halftime, you know, when they made that run, it's kind of, you know, where it kind of, uh, you know, got away from us. LeBron, you've seen them go on crazy runs in games um, and all your battles with them. What's sort of the key to, to – to not letting those um, build and stack, and, and how do you kind of have to combat that? Uh, you got to keep scoring, uh, get to the free throw line um, as well, or just get uh, points in the paint. Uh, you know they're going to go on runs. That's what they do. Um, you know, but you got to keep scoring. Uh, try to hold the fort down, obviously. Um, you know, but you give uh, credit where credit is due. They played exceptionally well tonight, and we didn't. And uh, the series is tied one one, so uh, that's where we're at. LeBron, you guys have been one of the best defensive team in the league over the last month plus. Uh, but the teams you played in the league, you know, the Warriors are pretty unique in the way they play uh, compared to the rest of the league, you know, with their personnel and continuity and all that. So um, what do you think it will, it will take to make your defense shine as much as it has against this specific team? Well, we still are. That doesn't change. We're still the best defensive team in the league, if not one of them. Um, so that doesn't change, and that's what we hang our hats on. Um, but like I said, you give credit where credit is due. Clay uh, was spectacular tonight. Uh, and Draymond was great in the pocket pass with the rolls and things of that nature. Um, you know, so uh, Jermichael gave him big time minutes. Those, you know, those 12 minutes felt like uh, you know 24 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, he was big time for their for their team in the starting role tonight too. So um, you give credit, like I said, where credit is due, and we move on to the next game. But our defense is where we that's where we hang our hat, and uh, you know, and that, that doesn't stop no matter who we're playing against. How did you? How do you guys feel? Obviously, neither of you played in the fourth quarter. Did you come out of this thing all right? And did you feel that you contested their three pointers enough in this game? Obviously, they're a great shooting team, but they, they made a lot of threes. We feel great, and we we did, yes, we contested threes. Eddie, when they, when they go small, obviously it stretches um, the defense and, and you know gets shooters to the corners, but. Um, does that change the way they were able to defend you guys too with their movement and, and, and 
even though they were smaller, were they more? Did you feel like they were more active in passing lanes and things like that? Yeah, I think they're a little bit <clears throat> more active in the uh, in the pocket. Uh, you know, they kind of clogged the paint. You know, in our pocket passes uh, that were pretty open game one, and um, you know, it didn't help that we didn't really shoot the ball well from three. Um, you know, so we start you know making those shots, making those threes, uh, be tough for them to pull in and kind of take away those pocket passes and uh, us playing in the paint. So um, that's all I think it was. You know, they, they made an emphasis on making sure that we try to, they try to, you know, find the guys on the perimeter, um, you know, on the three-point line and clog the paint up a little bit.